Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of listening to your word. Please bless us through your word again. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to read from the book of Ruth. As we build around that very important character in the Bible by the name of Ruth. She gives us a very clear example for the average believer to follow in these last days. We are going to be gleaning spiritual revelation that will bring a revolt, a revival, a restoration, and a renewal to our spirit man. I am praying that as we go through all of this and you follow us systematically, your life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. We are reading from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse number 16. Ruth, chapter 1, verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where you lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God, where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but dead, part thee and me. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. In verse 19, so they two went until they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Nehomai? She said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty had dealt very bitterly with me. And I went out full, but the Lord had brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi? Seeing the Lord have testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me. The passage we read today gives us a foundational background about roots, our character study for the next couple of days. The book of Ruth is a book that was dedicated to a family. The name of the man was Mr. Man that left the land of bread to a strange land. We saw that this man was married and had two children by the name of Chilion and Malion. And the wife was called Naomi. So they migrated to a strange land like I did explain previously. There they met these two ladies and married them. They were Lebanese girls. One was called Ophrah, the other was called Ruth. And they were married. Eventually, the two children died, the husband died, Elimelech died, and the two children also died. This is the case of a bereaved woman. So, the bereaved woman did a benediction to the two daughter-in-law and try to send them away. They are the, the, the consecration, the commitment of these two daughters were tried and tested. Why Ophran kissed Naomi and she went back to her idolatry because of the crisis of the time, because of the, fam the, the challenges in the land. They lost their husband, so she went back to continue her idolatrous, immoral, ungodly way. But Ruth stood out. She said, in spite of the challenges, that in fact of the obvious reality that has dawned on me, I am going to follow this woman. For the short time that I lived with this woman, she is a mother-in-law in a million. Her character is unique. Her conduct is different. 
Our commitment is spectacular. Our devotion is unique. There is something about our God that I needed to learn more. The way she behaves, the way she speaks, the way she dresses is unique. And so she stood steadfastly by Naomi while Ophran departed. And I like to let us know that the turning point in the life of a motor man is not when things are rosy. It's not when things are going on well. The turning point in your life is when you come through fears, battle, trial, affliction, challenges, and the way you respond to challenges of life determine the real hero in you. The passage we have read today was the turning point in the life of Ruth. So we have been led by the Holy Spirit to do a character study on the life and times of Ruth. Believing God that as a female, you will learn a lot of lessons. As a man, you will learn a lot of lessons that will bring total transformation to your lives in Jesus' name. Let's begin from verse 16, therefore. In verse 16, here we saw that this woman, though she lost her husband, and she had opportunity to go back. She had opportunity to return to her people. Nehemiah lifted up her voice, wept, and gave them benediction. But you can see the consecration of Ruth was tried and tested. She made up her mind. Entreat me not to return from following you. Where you go, I will go. Naomi, that narrow road that leads to eternal life that you have shown to me, I want to follow it with you. I don't know your background. I don't know where you are coming from. But I'm sure if I follow you on that road, I will not miss it. I am going to end well. Mothers, can your children say that about you? Mother-in-laws, can your daughter-in-law say that about you? Or you are cruel, you are harsh, you are hard, that no mother, no daughter-in-law will ever want to live with you. Learn a lesson from the life of Naomi. Then we saw the consecration of this young damsel, though from an 18 nation of Lebanon or the Syrian, as the case may be at that time, she consecrated herself. She said, where you go, I will go. You can see there, number one, the steadfastness of fruit. We must be steadfast at all season and in all situations. Steadfastness must characterize our lives in every situation that we find ourselves. I am praying that God Almighty will give you that grace in Jesus' name. Another lesson we are going to learn from the life of Ruth that helped her, catapult her to become a great woman of destiny that we and can be talking about today is her commitment. She did not waver in her commitment to relationship. That is very, very important. When there are temporal adversity, the next thing is not to divorce your wife or divorce your husband or abandon your initial commitment. We must be consistent with our commitment. Number three, we see consecration. That is one word that we no longer hear in the gospel terrain today. Consecration is the act of giving up something in order to fulfill another thing. Consecration is surrendering your right, your privilege, your opportunity in order to satisfy a demand upon your life. We saw that lesson also from the life of this young lady called Ruth. The final lesson we are going to see from the life of Ruth, which will challenge you and challenge me, was that even when the mother-in-law tested her and said, you can go, she didn't know what was ahead, but she believed. She surrendered her all and said, even if at the end it didn't work out for me, at least I've taken a course in life. It was a surrendered life. 
So as we look at all of this together, let's summarize then. What are the lessons we learn from the life of Ruth? As we begin the study, we see number one, a steadfastness. Number two, a surrendered life. Number three, we will also see from our life, a life of steadfast devotion. And we call that one supplication. Entreat me not from going. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Do we have those life conduct in our lifestyle? So in trying times like this, God wants you, number one, to be steadfast. He wants you, number two, to surrender your will, your passion, your appetite, your desire. And number three, he wants you to supplicate. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. I pray God will bless you as you imbibe this study into your life in Jesus' name. I'm going to continue with the life of Ruth as we study from chapter 2 of the book of Ruth in our next subsequent study. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.